Achieving PD-1, the Platform Developer 1 Salesforce certification is an important certification for everyone, not just developers. Whether you have a technical background or not, this video will help you achieve your PD-1 Salesforce certification. Welcome to 100 Days of Trailhead, where the tech community comes to learn Salesforce, learn tech, get inspired, and invest in ourselves. We are your trail guides, here to support you on your learning journey. We release videos weekly. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video. In the description below, you can find links for everything we mention in this video, as well as books and resources we found useful. Visit our blog, 100daysoftrailhead.com, for other helpful Salesforce and tech content. Ever wonder why it is important to be able to read code regardless of your role? In this video, Janet Elliott discusses why obtaining the PD-1 certification is important, tips to achieve the certification, and resources she used to get there. Janet is a technical program manager with over nine years of experience in the Salesforce ecosystem and is five times certified. Janet is a Lightning Champion, she leads the Sacramento WIT Group, and is a co-founder of the Sacramento Salesforce Saturday. Your quest, should you choose to take it, is to journey with us to learn how to pass your PD-1 exam without a technical background. Your quest begins now. Hi everyone, Janet Elliott here, and I'm super excited to be coming to you as part of the 100 Days of Trailhead Top 5. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about I'm myself. I'm certified working towards the Application Architect Certification. I have one more certification to go. I'm the leader of the Sacramento Women in Tech Trailblazer Community Group. I'm the co-founder of Sacramento Salesforce Saturday, and I'm also a Lightning Champion. I'm very active on Twitter, so I've also added my Twitter handle here if you'd like to give me a follow. So on to the topic at hand today. Today I'd like to talk to you about the top five tips to go from zero to PD-1. When I say zero, what I'm referencing is people coming from a non-technical or non-coding background. And PD-1 is Platform Developer 1 certification with Salesforce. So a little bit of a disclaimer, this is not going to be a technical presentation. There are a lot of technical resources out there, and I have some information for you on that. But this is um, about the journey to PD-1 if you're coming from a non-technical background. So it's a little bit of a higher level and how to approach it. So these are my top five tips. Before I start though, I'd like to explain why I think Platform Developer 1 is an important certification for everyone not just developers. If you're starting from a non-technical background, it's important that you're going to understand the fundamental concepts of the platform regardless of your role. So whether you're an admin, developer, architect, a BA, a project manager, even an executive, there are some basic fundamental concepts that it's really important that you understand if you're going to be working on the platform. The thing about Platform Developer 1 is it provides that framework for you to gain that knowledge. It gives you a path of topics to understand so that you can gain that foundational knowledge, which is really going to help you in the long run. So really, it's about the journey of learning these concepts more so than about obtaining the Platform Developer 1 certification, which of course is awesome, but really it's about gaining that knowledge along the way to help you. So let's start out with the first tip. Tip number one is motivation. When you're coming from a non-technical background and you're studying for Platform Developer 1, there's going to be a lot of foreign concepts. It's not like a lot of the other certifications where maybe you have some familiarity with a lot of the um, information and you're just needing to study to gain some additional knowledge. You're with the Platform Developer 1, you're going to be hit with a lot of net new information. And so before you start, it's important to understand What's your motivation for taking on Platform Developer 1? You have to be realistic that your background is going to support the journey. If you're brand new to the ecosystem, like that's going to be a tough road because you don't have the background to understand some of the foundational material that you need going into Platform Developer 1. So I'd recommend that you have at least your admin and your Platform App Builder certification before you think about taking on Platform Developer 1. But it's with regard to your motivation, it's important that you define your end game. Why, why PD1? Are you looking to transition to be a developer? Are you on a journey to application or system architect? It's one of the required certifications. Do you want to better understand the platform as an administrator? 
you know, maybe as an administrator, you're working with um, developers, either in-house or third-party developers, and you're needing to communicate things like requirements and solutions with them. So understanding these, uh, this foundational material is really going to help you in your job. Or maybe you're a BA or a project manager, and you want to be able to talk the talk. You're running a project, and you want to really be understanding, like, what are the developers doing? Is that the appropriate solution? So before you even approach this, you need to understand what is your motivation. Tip number two, mindset. So as I mentioned before, Platform Developer One is not like other certifications. You need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. You're going to go through some of the topics and you're not going to understand them at first. And you're going to need to maybe set them aside, go learn some other topics and come back to those. And so you don't want to get frustrated with that. So you need to set your mindset up front that, you know, you're going to go through some rough patches in learning. You're going to have to reach out to people. You're going to have to revisit concepts. Or most importantly, you're going to have to understand that you may have a vague understanding of a topic. But as you go forward, um, maybe go to some developer group meetings, maybe you're reading some online blogs or going to some webinars, those concepts will become clearer. So if you have that mindset up front, then you're going to have a more positive journey and you're going to stick with it. So just know that up front to set your mindset appropriately. Tip number three has to do with mastery. So that's mastering the information. My advice on mastering the information is to layer it. So you're starting with the declarative. You're starting with things like configuration, data model, and process automation. A lot of these things are covered in the platform app builder certification. Next, you're going to some of the basics about data types, triggers, methods, classes, and loops. This again is the setting the foundation. Then you're layering on the next level of information. And again, adding some more topics. And then finally, some of the, um, you know, smaller, but certainly just as important topics there. So we're getting to in the middle layer here, things like order of execution, SOCL and SOCL and DML limits are important. So we're building that on top of our foundation. And then we're getting into the UI, Visual Force, Lightning Components, Aura and LWC. That's a whole section um, in and of itself. And then the sort of miscellaneous items that are important, system classes, platform events, security vulnerabilities, and best practices, of course. This doesn't cover all of the topics, but it's really just to demonstrate how you need to approach this in a layering um, way so that you can gain some confidence as you go when you're learning the information. As far as mastery, and maybe you can take a screenshot of this, here is some advice that I have as to where do you begin? You're new to this. You've never done any development before. This information is brand new. Where do you even start? So my advice would be things like Apex Academy from David Liu. Maybe go back to some old presentations, Dreamforce 2019, or now that we're getting into Dreamforce 2020, there will be um, presentations on learning Apex and starting out. And also in these times, lots of virtual meetings on the topics. And also, Women Code Heroes is a website that Rad Women Code uses, and it really starts off at the basics. So with these items, you can start to gain just, you know, a little bit of confidence to build that foundation. Then I've posted some resources on the next place you can go. Where are the places where you can build on that information? There's uh, third-party resources, things like Rad Women Code, Ladies the Architects, Apex Hours, Focus on Force. Certainly, there's tons of material on Trailhead both trailhead modules and virtual boot camps and then ongoing webinar and user group content there's lots of virtual meetings out there and something that was really important for me is to read the documentation this is a list of most if not all of the developer documentation really important to read that and then also there's twitter slack discord um, the trailblazer success community um, the slack exchange community stack exchange community Places where you can go and ask people if you have questions on certain um, topics. And everybody in the community, super willing to help you, um, you know, understand those topics, things you might have questions on. Tip number four, mentor. 
So the I, when I was going through Platform Developer One, Mentor played a really important part for me. Um, someone who was a senior developer, I could go to them with questions that I had when I was studying. So you want to be, so what's the role of a mentee in that situation? You don't want to be someone who's going and asking the mentor, you know, to teach it to you, to sit down and have a class with you, or to try to just, you know, get that information straight into your brain. That's not going to work. If you want to be successful with a mentor, you need to put the work in up front, try and understand the information, do some hands-on, and then come to your mentor with specific questions that you have answered. With that, they can take that specific question, they can provide you with um, some details on it, and also maybe give you some real-world examples. So I found it was most successful with a mentor when I put the work in up front, I had specific questions, and then the mentor was able to address those specific questions with me. Where to find a mentor? So certainly, if you have somebody that you work with, that's a great place to look because they're going to provide you with some examples that are really relevant to your environment. You can also look at your local user groups, both your admin user groups, developer user groups, and then certainly online. There are lots of opportunities in some of the different um, forums to find people to answer your questions. And don't be afraid to ask somebody to be your mentor, but understand they have a busy job also. And um, define with them what the role is, that you're coming to them with some specific questions. You know, maybe you're getting a study group together and you have one person that you're working with. Um, so that really helped me be successful is to be able to reach out to somebody, again, like a senior developer, who was able to help me understand some of the information. Tip number five, the mountain. So it's, it's intimidating when you're going from a non-technical background and you want to take on Platform Developer One. It's easy to put it off because you just don't know where to start and you just keep putting it off. But I would like to encourage you to start the climb. You've got to start somewhere. And as I noted on that resources slide, there are places that are perfect for people coming from a non-technical background to just get that initial motivation, that initial information to build some confidence that you can layer on. And what do you get when you get to the top of this? What is the outcome when you achieve the Platform Developer One certification? It's awesome that you've got the certification, but really what you're coming away with is that knowledge. And for me, it was such a huge um, eye-opening experience to learn some of the information that I did, and it's made a huge impact on my role. Um, so some of the things that you'll gain out of it, if you're an admin, you're gonna gain the decisions of clicks versus code. You can have much better insight into that decision. You're going to be able to be involved in the troubleshooting and debugging, and you're going to be able to provide support because you understand the context of the platform as a whole. As a project manager, you're going to understand the complexity of the solutions and the necessary resource time. You're not simply going to just be putting figures into a project plan and doing status reports. You're going to really understand what the resources are doing and be able to have some input there. And you're going to be able to ask questions and challenge um, some of the decisions, have some brainstorming conversations. As an architect, you're going to have deeper involvement in the solutioning and the brainstorming, and you're going to understand the code solutions that are being discussed. You're also going to be able to propose solutions and understand their impact. And as a developer, of course, you're on your way. If you're coming from a non-technical background, it's absolutely possible to become a developer. And Platform Developer One, I believe, is the beginning. Like you've proved that you understand the foundation of it. You have a solid foundation in Salesforce tools and best practices, and you have some experience with hands-on work. So this is to demonstrate why I feel like Platform Developer One really has a huge impact no matter what role that you um, are in. So those are my top five tips. I'd really like to encourage you to take on Platform Developer One. Like I said, it's had a huge impact on my role as a program manager, project manager, solution architect. It's made a big difference. Um, I wish you good luck on your journey and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks so much. And with that, we're at the end. We would love to hear what you're doing to prepare for PD-1 and what video topics you want us to cover in future videos. Comment below.
We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you've made it to this point, we want to take an opportunity to say thank you. Since you've stayed with us, here's a bonus. Use the study guides and practice exams from Focus on Forest to get a better understanding of what you don't understand so you can better prepare for those areas of the exam. Here are links below that include a 25% off discount on the Focus on Forest Developer Bundle. Thank you for spending time with us. Please like and subscribe to our channel because we share weekly content to support your tech and Salesforce learning journey. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a new video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on 100daysoftrailhead.com, all of which are listed below. Thank you for learning with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.